Hey, what's up guys? It is Dan from Fight Wave, and today I'm joined by somebody who I have been wanting to speak with for quite some time now. He's one of my favorite fighters in the UFC lightweight division, the shark thing that is the lightweight division, full of nothing but killers, and this man is no exception. He's the pride of New Jersey and the pride of North Carolina. Today I'm joined by none other than the man himself, Joe Selecki. How you doing today, brother? Good, man. Good. Just finished up a strength and conditioning workout, and uh, good. Yeah, got not got all the time in the world to talk to you until I got to go back and train again, so... Uh, good morning so far. Yeah, good morning. And obviously, I mentioned off air, you know, just uh, waking up early to get the media in, and you know, obviously, nothing like a good morning sun. First and foremost, you know, how's life? How's everything going in the life of Joe Selecki? And, you know, just how's training been and all the, you know, the, the usual, I guess, questions. Yeah. Um, but yeah, my morning was probably different than yours. You know, you got up early and got recharged. And I woke up with, uh, you know, my, my daughter's two and a half. Uh, jumping up and down, you know, throwing stuff at me and uh, <laughs> running wild. So a little different morning routine. <laughs> uh, but yeah, life's been great, man. It's, it's been amazing. Um, yeah, spending time with my family and uh, my daughter's growing. I got a son on the way in two months and uh, just training, you know, training as much as I possibly can uh, every single day. You know, just uh, nothing really changes for me. It's always kind of the same schedule all year. Is, uh, you know, the locations I change kind of tra- uh, or locations I train kind of change depending on, you know, if we have a fight coming up or not, I'll go to um, you know, my head coach, Jeff Jimmo, is like three and a half hours away from where I live. So I'll do most of my camp up there these days. But uh, aside from that, you know, I'm always training. So it's been great. You know, it's just kind of it's kind of life for me. So every day in the gym, two, three times a day um, and teaching, you know, just just enjoying it all, man. I just I love martial arts and uh, spending time with my family. So it's pretty much all I do. No, yeah, definitely. Whether it's, you know, being a coach, whether it's being a train, you know, training yourself. I feel like, like you mentioned, that sort of consistency and rhythm that you've kind of developed for yourself over time. And you've kind of built up a, a schedule for yourself and not a, kind of like, I feel like in the life of fighting as opposed to uh, nowadays, as opposed to like, you know, um, I guess the best way to put it is like now when you look at fighting, it's nonstop chaos. I know a lot of fighters are just kind of scrambling to find themselves all over the place, but really being locked in and being fine and ready to just fine tune little things and not make monumental changes. Like you said, you know, whether it's camp, you know, you'll, you'll make the drive out to your head coach or, you know, whether it's just training, strength and conditioning, you kind of have structure, which I love to hear. And just talk to me, obviously, about like, you know, like you mentioned, that structure and just being able to, to be around your family, because I know that a big part of your identity is being a family man and being a father. And I know that that's paid. Div- I can only imagine the dividends that that's paid for you as a fighter, as a person, as a human being, you know, just having that uh, kind of family roots tied in and improving yourself as not only a martial artist, as a competitor. Talk to me just about that a little bit. You know, obviously, uh, like you mentioned, you have a boy on the way. Congratulations, first and foremost. You know, that's amazing to hear. And it just talk to me just obviously about the, the mindset of just, you know, um, to just the power of martial arts, you know, being able to pass that and bestow that upon your, your daughter and, you know, hopefully your son when, when he, you know, grows up and you can, you know, pass that on to him. Just being able to have your family by your side in this journey, you know, having them be a prevalent part of your of your training and of your lifestyle and just being able to, like you mentioned, it was a chaotic morning, morning woke up, scrambling to get the daughter, you know, situation sorted. Just, the, you know, life as a father and just how that's paid dividends for you as a competitor and a human being. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, there's so much there. It's uh, It's been amazing. You know, I, I spent the, I guess the first half, you know, I hope it's not the first half. I hope to fight a lot longer. You know, I fought in about eight years now. I'd love to go another eight to ten. You know, I feel great. Um, you know, I think I'm entering my prime, so we'll see. But uh, I don't want to say the first half, but, you know, the first half of oh, yeah. the fights I've had so far. You know, fighting from a place of, like, um, I don't know, not mad at the world, but just trying, you know, trying to prove... You know, maybe when you're starting out in a crazy sport like this or a crazy, you know, career path, it's not a career path when you're an amateur or early pro, but you treat it like that. Um, just trying to prove people wrong. You know, maybe I didn't have people in my life that were supporting me the way I wanted them to or whatever. And that's, that's a fine fuel, you know, but that's a very, it's good when you're young, you know, but I wouldn't want to be the 30 year old who's angry at the world and bitter and, um, you know, harboring that, trying to draw fuel from that source, you know. Um, so really, I think, of course, first and foremost, in all of my life, like everything good in my life comes from my faith, you know, um, but from a worldview, you know, becoming, becoming a father was a huge turning point in that because, you know, not only is this my means to provide, but also, um, especially the last fight I was thinking about it with, with the son on the way, especially because, you know, life's tough for people, but especially, you know, as a, as a young man in this world, it can be tough to, to find your way and, um, you're expected at least by old, by old standards. And I think it's something we shouldn't lose, um, you know, as we progress forward in, in the world is like, to, to have a certain element of grit to you, you know, whether you're a fighter or not. Um, so I, I just think about those things now when I'm putting on performances and um, how I'm approaching the fights even. Like, 
I've obviously, you know, coming on that first contract or coming off a ball, so you come back and you're fighting sometimes conservative just to eke out wins. And I think about that stuff now. I think about really attacking, you know, what's in front of me and um, appreciating opportunities and, you know, wearing out rather than rusting out from just sitting around, you know. So um, it, it's it's that. It's exactly that. And when you talk about martial arts is, you know, everything in my life comes from God. But the vessel that I feel like uh, he used to show that to me in my life was martial arts. You know, I met my, my wife through – you know, a coach at the time who was going to the bar too much and I don't drink, but I was going there kind of keeping him company, hanging out. Like, uh, all my friends are through martial arts, you know, uh, my kid, my, my daughter comes to, to watch me teach and train all the time. Like, it's just kind of like my way of life. So, uh, yeah, it's just been a blessing. And, and I do hope that they'll have that element in their life. I don't want them to be fighters or anything like that. Um, but just to, you know, to have that confidence and knowing how to defend yourself, even in, uh, you know, I, I train since I'm a little kid, so I, I think of stuff like peer pressure, you know, in my mind, I chose at a young age because of my coach, John Hassett, growing up did the same and I wanted to emulate him. He never drank, he never touched a drug, he never did anything like that. So I took that challenge and in my mind, it was always like, I don't have to cave to peer pressure because I can defend myself. Like in my crazy brain, I was like, well, they can't hold me down and make me take a sip of their drink or, you know, whatever. So yeah. I think it just, uh, it empowers you with a little bit of confidence in a in a crazy chaotic world where everybody's trying to push and pull you in different ways. So, uh, I hope we'll be around for that. And, uh, for me, a new hope is that like, I'll fight long enough to, uh, for them to understand what it is that I do. You know, my daughter knows that I go bop bops, you know, and she'll come in, but she's two. So it it would be cool to to be fighting when they're eight and nine and, you know, maybe old enough where they can come to an event or something, uh, probably on the bucket list now. No, yeah, definitely. And I love that you mentioned that almost like uh, a gift from God himself. And I know, I know you're a man of faith and obviously I'm a man of faith myself. So like, I appreciate that message all the more, you know, and I love that you mentioned it almost as like a vessel, you know, a, a gift from God himself and a vessel from him to be able to, to showcase and do what you love. And like you mentioned, uh, fatherhood and, you know, just having a, being a family man, getting a newfound purpose and fighting for someone beyond just yourself as not only as a competitor, but as a human being and showing them, you know, even that, even if they're not going to be competitors and stuff, which I would hope not, you know, I know a lot of fighters are kind of against that, you know, they're like, Hey, I'm fighting, but you know, I don't want you to fight. I want you to go to school, get a good education, you know, live the life that you're meant to live. You know, fighting was just kind of uh, something that came to me, but like, I love that you mentioned that obviously like, um, just the, the lessons that you get from martial arts, like you mentioned, you've been training martial arts for such a young, from such a young age. And now, you know, being able to pass those lessons on and really, you know, show to them that, you know, there's so much more to this art. It is it is an art of violence, but it is also an art where you learn so much more about yourself. It's, a, it's an art of self-discovery and being able to, you know, pass that and, and transcend that into family lessons, into all of these sort of, sort of different dynamics and components in your family life. I feel like it makes you a, not only a better competitor, but a better human being. Like you mentioned, kind of uh, reshaping your, 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 you know, mindset in the fight game, giving you a newfound purpose and just being able to, you know, oh, from a guy who was being angry at the world, like you mentioned, having some sort of grit. I feel like that's an essence that's lost in our society now is like having that kind of work ethic and determination to keep pushing through even the worst of times and having that grit from martial arts and stuff, little things like that. It's these little sub lessons that we pick up and we add to ourselves and we and to pick ourselves back up, pick up the pieces and really develop as human beings. So I love seeing that. And I think that we've seen that in your performances, I think definitely because, uh, you know, obviously on a two fight winning streak. And your last performance was a statement, I think, to the division and really just to your mindset and evolution in this sport. So talk to me about that fight, obviously, a little get a little bit against Carl Deaton the third. You know, that was a, that was a performance that I think a lot of people were like, wow, we did not know Joe had that in him. But I think that for fans of a true fans of the sport, we've known about your grappling prowess for quite some time. You know, whether it was, you know, fight. I think that you know, obviously, you know, there was fights like the Jared Gordon fight, were, which were very close. But then there was also other standout performances that I thought were really nice to see. Talk to me just about, obviously, in your eyes, the evolution and, you know, always just having the respect of the fan base. You know, I think from a hardcore perspective, a lot of the fans have been riding with you for, you know, years now because of what you've been able to to culminate in the grappling prowess that you've been able to showcase. So talk to me about just uh, maybe seeing some of those evolutions in your in your game, maybe just a mindset shift or maybe just a, a shift in how your skill set has kind of improved over time in that Carl Deaton fight or in your last fight, I should say. Yeah, absolutely. You know, um, there's a couple things. I mean, the, the big thing was it's just time, right? I mean, getting those reps in the octagon, it really is learning on the job. Like, um, I was very fortunate to fight at some bigger promotions on the, on the regional scene, CFFC and Ring of Combat, and they do prepare you, you know, to a certain extent. But there's nothing like being in the UFC. Even, you know, uh, five out of my six fights in the UFC have been in the Apex, but still, it's a whole different 
it's a whole different vibe and you know getting in there with guys that are battle tested and uh you know deaton was a last minute replacement so of course your mind's gonna play tricks on you and say oh well maybe he wasn't ufc level or something like that but you know his record really spoke for itself um and no one would ever finished him so i do take pride in that but it wasn't even the fight as much as it was the camp you know i really felt like i hit my stride i did uh you know 90 percent of my camp uh up at jim o with our head coach jeff jim o and uh, really being around him was just something eye-opening. I mean, I've been around him for, you know, five-plus years now. But uh, our trips were a lot shorter back in the day. You know, now as the, you know, this is my full-time career and it has been for a while. But, you know, as, as you get on your second contract, your third contract, you're able to, you know, put more into your camp. And I'm able to spend more time away from my family and, you know, uh, you know, invest more into my camp. So uh, I was spending the entire week up there and, and staying in his house and stuff. And uh, it was just understanding, you know, a lot of how he thinks was rubbing off on me. You know, I've always been a very... Um, results driven person as much as I love martial arts like I'm a martial artist through and through but uh, I tend to be a perfectionist where he's more uh, you know concerned with progress and that's been huge for me so focusing on the process much more than the outcome especially in a crazy game like MMA um, and, and you see a lot of guys I read a lot you know and uh, when you read about like Penn State and Kel Sanderson's coaching approach it seems that they follow that as well like they work on you know progressing their technique you know getting better at wrestling and their mindset and then when the fight comes the results take care of itself rather than being like i've got to get two takedowns every round today or it's a failure you know it's no i got to just do better today than i did yesterday and get the next best thing and the next best thing and uh, that really helped me and in in that in training in that way and working on new techniques and just kind of evolving our game it really i've never felt like that in my entire career so uh, that's been huge you know and the other thing i think is is the maturity you know i've been in there now with guys uh, everything from guys who have 20 plus fights like uh, Matt Wyman and Jim Miller, you know, as the most fights in UFC history, down to guys coming off of, uh, you know, the regional scene for a short notice call up like Deaton. So I think all of that experience lets you know what fighting at the highest level is and what it isn't. You know, my boxing coach Chris Gowd always used to say, a punch is just a punch and a kick is just a kick. Now we know there's different degrees of that to, you know, who can do it faster and harder and all that, but all these guys are human, you know, and that's what I've seen. Like, it wasn't all that different fighting Deaton, whose first fight in the UFC than it was fighting Jim Miller, you know? Uh, the difference lies in, in me and the game plan, right? So um, it's just that maturity to know that anything can happen in there. Anybody can beat anybody on any given night. And uh, with that approach and the training we had, it's almost like that, why not me? Like, I think I went out there with a different uh, different level of confidence, you know? But also at the same time, a whole new reverence for fighting going, I know this man can beat me if I walk into the wrong shot, but that's not going to deter me from fighting freely and going for the win instead of trying to be cautious. So uh, I guess that's just maturity in this game, you know? No, you definitely like you mentioned that that maturity comes with just experience and I love that that idea and that mindset of really just going in there trying to be better from the day before and I think that that's a true martial artist mindset because we're we're in a sport where I think ego is the devil and obviously you know in a sport where trajectory you know everyone's trajectory is different like I, I was talking with uh, another fighter from you know the Australia obviously like he came up at the same time with guys like Robert Whittaker Alexander Volkanovsky but that that journey that you know, to get to the UFC, maybe for you, it might be 10, 12 years in the making. For other guys, it might be five, six years. But being a part of that journey and just being able to to level up and enjoy the art of improvement as opposed to the art of, you know, the reaping the rewards. As a, I think that that's all the more difference, you know. Nowadays, I feel like the essence of being a fighter is kind of lost. And, you know, with the in the age of social media, we live in an era where, you know, people, everyone thinks they can be a fighter. Everyone thinks they can be a competitor, but not everyone can be a martial artist. And I think that's a very different, you know, mindset and approach. And I think that that's something that I see a lot from, you know, UFC competitors, from, you know, um, Bellator competitors, one competitors, PFL. And I think in the art of mixed martial arts, we see a very, you know, a varying difference from boxing where obviously now there's components like influencer boxing, which is like, uh, in, in its own right, it has its own place, but I think that the essence of being a martial artist reaps none, no truer and no, you know, is no more greater than in mixed martial arts. And I think that that's something that we see. And like you mentioned, uh, you know, obviously you're at that quote unquote halfway point in your career, but it doesn't feel like a halfway point. You know, it feels like you're, you're still, evo you know, leveling up. Do you still seeing evolutions in your fight game? You know, 10, 12, 13, you know, however long it goes. You know, however many years it goes, you're still seeing evolutions, and a part of that journey is improvement, and you know, just getting that experience, understanding, and it's not even just more so, uh, you know, in how your physical skill set is, how your fighting skill set is, but also your mental game and uh, having that mental edge, being sharp mentally, and 
you know understanding that the bright lights are just the bright lights what you're going in there to do is no none other than you've been going in there to do maybe 15 16 times thus far in your career and just being able to to be in that moment and really doing it for yourself you're not just doing it for the fan base you're doing it for yourself getting in that octagon and enjoying the journey and a lot a part of that journey i feel like is is recognizing milestones along the way like you mentioned whether it's a belt promotion whether it's you know uh regional titles whether it's anything like, like that but for you i think that's something that i felt like really stood out to me as a, as a more like a of a perspective changer was you know getting your own trading card you know and that's something that that for me it, it, it may not be obviously a martial arts uh, you know accomplishment or an accolade but it's it speaks volumes and i think that even the little things like that can improve you mentally you know uh recognizing that the journey has its own benefits the journey itself has you know given you uh, you know things that you would never never have dreamt of you know growing up as a little kid you know looking at sports cards and I, I, when i went to like target or something you know just buying a pack of cards and you know, coming out and opening it and saying, oh my God, it's like an NBA player. But now going, imagine you going into like a sports card shop, buying a UFC box and, you know, packing a Joe Selecki base card or something like that, you know, just it's all the more perspective and it gives you so much clarity on this in the sport, the, the outside factors, the internal factors. And obviously, you know, there's the improvement as a martial artist, but talk to me about what it meant to you just to be able to, you know, have these little accolades here and there, you know, have these little milestones that you can say, you know, whether it's like, oh, getting in the octagon three times overall in the UFC, four times overall, or getting a submission victory, you know, these little notches and accolades that you can add to a storied career and really, you know, take stride in those. And not like you mentioned, getting in there improves you as a fighter, but I feel like it's also these accolades and, you know, keeping track of the little things and really appreciating the little things that make you also improve because it shows that despite victory or loss, there's something you can always take from getting in that octagon. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. I mean, and, and you know, the milestones just keep coming and coming. I remember going to the – and I keep moving the goalposts, so it makes it fun. You know, it's like when we got to the Contender Series, we went for uh, the pre-production, you know, a couple months before, and I was sitting there with my buddy Ali, who's been with me from this entire journey, like just doing jiu-jitsu tournaments uh all the way to now and i remember being like man like i just hope i get to come back to vegas one more time and see the pi and and you know be a part of this fight capital of the world and uh you know now i've been out there like 10 or 11 times um then you look at i just want to make that walk to the octagon i want to get a win because i don't want to say i'm a ufc vet if i didn't win a fight there and then it goes on and on you know, now i'm looking at my third contract coming up so um yeah it's amazing and then you, you see the the stuff that isn't just practical but the stuff like you said of like being a little kid wanting to be a professional athlete um you know we're all we're all in the backyard for me it was you know whatever every, all the sports except soccer i was terrible at that but uh i never played them for for like the school or anything but just in my backyard with friends you're always putting yourself in that scenario in your head of like you know bottom of the ninth full count bases loaded like that type of thing and when you make these walks you know one one going to the third round how many fights have i had like that now and you're like man like this is that moment that, I, that you dreamed of, you know, and the baseball card, the trading card is exactly that. And, uh, I put, when I made the post, I said, me and my brother used to, you know, hunt these baseball cards like fiends, you know, looking for, uh, the Sammy Sosa rookie card, or Mark McGuire, you know, he broke the record. And, uh, I loved Allen Iverson was my first introduction to like high level sports. Cause, uh, that was the year the Sixers went to the championship in uh, Philadelphia. We were from that area. So, um, just watching these guys and to look at a, it's a little piece of cardboard, man, but it's just cool that anybody would even want it. You know, whether it's 99 cents on eBay, like I think the starting bids were, it's just cool that people are willing to bid a couple bucks over something with your name and face on it. Uh, you know, it, it's pretty cool. It, it's just stuff that uh, it's all a bonus. You know, I think I've already outkicked my coverage of where I ever belonged as a as an athlete. You know, my first my first jersey in any sport ever that I didn't have made, you know, like a Sixers game or something, was my UFC fight kit jersey. So. Uh, I wasn't a good athlete. I wasn't meant to be here, you know, but it was meant to be somehow. So, uh, dude, it's been awesome, you know. And then uh, the last fight, my wife got to come because, you know, COVID lockdowns, we haven't been back. She made every fight I ever had except the last, you know, five because of, uh, you the know, the COVID here. Yeah. And, uh, and uh, she got to come, but not only did she come, you know, she's she was however many months pregnant with our son, you know. So it's just, it's just cool stuff. You start to stop and, like, smell the roses just a little bit. You know, I've always been very bad at that, but – as I get older and older, I try to try to appreciate it, you know, because uh, I'm learning now with with my daughter, especially because every day she's just a little older and a little bigger and a, talking a little faster. You're like, man, like same in my career. One day you're going to blink and this is going to be the last walk you ever make. And and, you know, you better remember those sights and sounds and smells because you'll never you'll never be in that octagon again, at least for your own fight. You know, I hope to, to coach a lot of fighters there down the line one day. But, um, you know, never with never with it being about me again. So, uh 
it's pretty cool, man. The whole the whole thing's been amazing. Oh yeah, absolutely. I love you. Just uh, more or less, you know, what's a personal goal for you? Just for the remainder of this year, you know, whether it's fighting related or whether it's life related or whether it's you know family related. Obviously, you've got your son on the way. Uh, you know, any goals in the life of Joe Selecki, not just even fighting related. Yeah, you know, it's it's to to make constant improvements, but I wanna I wanna make strides this year. You know, I wanna. Uh, you know, of course, fighting. I, I, I got a couple things I'm healing up, and we have the baby on the way next or two months from now. So uh, I want to get back in the fall, but that's I really want to make a push. You know, I've uh, one thing at a time always, but this is the time. You know, this is my, my prime, but uh, I really want to focus on on becoming like uh, almost like an ambassador for the sport. You know, not like not like a, a big time. Like I'm not saying I want to be like some famous person. I just mean like. Uh, it's really time to start giving back. You know, it's time to get in the gym and start working with the next generation too. And, um, you know, so I really plan on to do some coaching here really soon. Um, you know, while I'm training, of course, and fighting, but it's that time to jump into that leadership role on our team and, uh, you know, start making sure that I'm looking out for the guys that are helping me, you know, and that's, that's the big thing for the year. I think that's good to, uh, you know, for, for my, my family to see too one day is to, you know, I want to make sure that, you know, fighting can be a very selfish life. So, um, I want to make sure I don't fall fall victim to that and, uh, you know, end up just being me, 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 me. And then one day it's done and all I ever worried about was me and never, never helped anybody because, uh, you know, I've outkicked my coverage. I'm playing with house money in the UFC. I really feel that way. And uh, that's because of a culmination of just the help of so many people, you know, um, who gave selflessly. And, uh, you know, now, uh, like I said, I've been in the UFC for a couple fights now and uh, I'm having some success and it's time to make sure that I'm not – you know, going there by myself and that other people are, are making it too. And I'm able to help with them. So that's the big thing this year is, uh, putting the infrastructure in to, to really help out the guys on the team and, and the next generation, or just the people that want to learn, you know, uh, just people that want to do martial arts for fun. It's time to start, you know, making sure that the same thing that changed my life in martial arts is, um, you know, being peddled down to other people and, and helping them and pulling them up as well. And that's, that's the big thing for the next, the next couple of years while I'm fighting, you know, and I really hope that, uh, not only can the act of fighting, you know, work out well for my family and my wife, and my kids and myself, but also like it would be a little source of inspiration to the people that are, uh, you know, struggling or, you know, starting out. And, you know, we have teammates that are, you know, working their nine to five and they hate it and they want to get out of there and they want to, they want to make it to the next level and make a career out of it or, you know, whatever it may be. So maybe I can, uh, you know, help them out. That, that's the plan. No, yeah, definitely. And I love that goal and just being an ambassador for your sport. Like you said, not really like a social ambassador, but more like a, you know, uh, just a general ambassador and a, a person that people look to, you know, when they want to when they want to improve in the sport, someone they can look up to for advice, inspiration and be kind of like a role model figure above anything else. Not necessarily not necessarily like, oh, uh, just like a big on social media or something like that, but somebody who truly propels the sport to a new light, whether it's regionally, locally, you know, being a local guy that people can come up to, you know, regionally, somebody that people can come up to, but either way, just bringing the score, sp sport up to a whole new level in terms of, uh, you know, improving the lives of fi of the combatants, of the fighters, of the, you know, of the, just the practitioners, I think, you know, just somebody that people who don't hesitate to come to for advice and ask questions is what makes this sport great. It's such a, it's a sport so much centered in its roots about giving and being able to give back to the community and being somebody who, like you mentioned, fighting is a very selfish sport, but if we can, you know, share our secrets, if we can just give a little bit of ourselves back to the sport, it makes it all the more powerful and all the more better. And I thank you so much for your time, Joe. It's been an honor to sit here and speak with you. And I look forward to watching your next fight whenever it may be, like you mentioned, uh, nursing some injuries and obviously with the boy on the way. And once again, congratulations on that, you know, uh, hoping for a, you know, smooth and, you know, healthy, you know, uh, delivery and just everything of the sort, you know, it's been an honor to sit here and speak with you and, you know, to the fans at home watching this, thank you so much for your time. Do be sure to check out Joe Selecki on Instagram and check him out uh, in the in the UFC octagon whenever that may be. You know, uh, easily one of the best grapplers in the in the lightweight division right now, and one of the best fighters uh, in the lightweight division. Period. I mean, uh, just that he's been doing amazing things in the division, fighting some of the biggest names, and more importantly, staking a claim for himself in the sport as as a great ambassador of the sport and a great representation of what makes martial arts is truly all about. So, with that being said, guys, it's been Dan from Fight Wave. Hopefully, you guys enjoyed this interview and like, comment, subscribe, and yeah, have a great day, guys.